What is going on guys? This is Lior and welcome back to the channel. Now, one of the cool thing, topics to talk about today, I feel like as a YouTuber, whether you're personal finance, real estate, stocks, whatever it is, is saving your income, right? Saving, uh, saving as much income as possible to invest, um, to ultimately create the financial freedom path for you. Now, that's in theory a great, I mean, amazing idea, but in this video, I'm gonna actually talk about why that thinking might be the ultimate thing that's actually slowing you down from achieving financial freedom. So before you turn off this video and think I'm crazy, make sure you tune in, because I'm gonna explain to you how that mindset shift actually completely changed my financial life. So let's get at it. What's going on guys, this is Lior, and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I dive into the topic, if this is your first time on my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. <laughs> helps me put out more content, gets me motivated to put out more stuff for you, and of course, boost the YouTube algorithm. So if you haven't already subscribed, smash that subscribe button for me, and that way I'll keep pumping out these videos like no tomorrow. So if you're into the whole concept of financial independence, right, the FIRE movement or whatever, right, if you're just trying to uh, create extra income for yourself, you've probably stumbled upon this pretty simple, uh, you know, personal finance comp concept of saving your money, right? You save most of your income, store that away, and use that to eventually, hopefully, invest and retire at some point sooner rather than when you're 55 or 65 years old. Now, that's a great, great concept in general, right? Having that mentality of saving all of your earned income. And I can tell you, when I was five years ago, just stepped out of college, um, that's really the mindset I had as well, right? Is I gotta earn, um, you know, earn my income and then save as much as possible to do something with it. But I can tell you now, five years later, as I'm about to cross the $1 million net worth marker, um, I can tell you that that mindset is actually a little dangerous, right? I've actually kind of shifted that mindset probably the last year or two. And in those last, you know, 12, 24 months, I've had the biggest gain in net worth, income, and everything. And I'm gonna talk about exactly why that just may be hurting you just a little bit in your financial freedom path. So the big issue I have with this uh, mindset and what I noticed, and I remember having this in my head all the time when I was younger, right? Uh, you know, first couple of years out of college is the saving, your in saving money and saving your income mindset almost creates a fear-based relationship with money, right? I mean, I remember every time I was out, right, if I was getting like food with some friends or, you know, some, we're talking about small stuff, right? We're not talking about like major expenses, but if I was out with food or with friends or at a bar getting a drink, I would like literally overanalyze the crap out of every single dollar I was spending, right? I'd be like, if I wanted to get an extra beer, I would, you know, take me like 10 minutes internally to be like, do I want to spend this extra six, seven dollars? Do I want to hold on to this extra six, seven dollars? And honestly, this kind of mindset, this kind of thinking over and over again really impedes you, right? I mean, it creates a fear-based relationship. You're scared to spend money, you're scared to use it because money ultimately is a tool, right? And if you're scared to use that tool, that is a major issue for you. Now, I will say the caveat, of course, is again, I'm not talking about major expenses, right? I'm not talking about, uh, you know, there's obviously things you don't wanna be blowing money on, right? Like luxury vehicles, luxury living, um, insane vacations, that kind of stuff. You know, the big ticket items, absolutely, you know, you, you definitely wanna be cutting on down on that. But when you're kind of getting into this major ping pong battle over a beer, right, at a bar, like that is, I believe, in my opinion, an issue, right? That's not healthy for you, and it's not gonna put you on that path to financial freedom. And this kind of leads me to the second point, right? Is when you have, if, if you do go down this path and you create this fear-based relationship with money, you're constantly focusing on your expenses, right? And, and that's kind of the second bucket, is you're constantly focusing on your expenses rather than focusing on how to grow your income right and what and here's what i mean right like when all of your energy is like ooh where can i cut like a couple dollars here a couple more dollars there just so i can save a little bit more money that takes a crap load of work right that's a crap load of mental work to figure out you know you have to go through budgeting you have to go through excel sheets you have to go through everything and again not to say i don't do that but when all of your energy is spent doing that and figure out where can i cut and save an extra 15 dollars here an extra 30 dollars here an extra 50 dollars here you don't leave a lot of energy for yourself to figure out well where, how can I actually grow my top line, right? Because you're not, let's be honest, you're not gonna get rich like saving 50 bucks a year or decreasing your cost by $300 a year. Like if you're talking about truly getting wealthy and truly retiring early, 
couple, you know, the, these things are not going to matter. The, the, the small change stuff, it's really making those bigger leaps in your income. So when you're constantly thinking about, you know, the expense side, I've noticed this myself is your creativity on the income side goes down, right? You have less juice for creative uh, ways to figure out, well, what can I do to increase my income here? Maybe I can um, start a little side hustle here, or maybe what if I go buy some real estate or maybe invest in index funds, right? Like whatever your strategy is in ter- to actually invest and generate more income, right? Generate more income, whether it's for your main income source or another income source, that's where you should be focusing your bulk of your efforts, right? Because Growing your top line, in my personal opinion, is way more important than your bottom line, right? Because bottom line, cutting expenses, sure, it's good, and you should, again, you should certainly keep track of it, but that's not where, gonna, that's not where you're going to earn your meat and potatoes if you really want to have substantial changes in your wealth and your income. And if you don't believe me, here's a simple way to just think about it, right? What do you think is going to have a bigger impact on your future? Figure out a way to say, save maybe $250 a month. Let's go high, right? Like $250, $300 a month on your food budget and figure out like, oh, where can I cook groceries? Where can I grow a little food out here? Or is it taking that energy and spending, how can I start a new project, a new initiative, a new, you know, a new side hustle that could maybe earn me a grand or two grand or five grand a month, right? Like my efforts today, I don't, like I spend them on figure out how can I make quantum leaps in, in my businesses, right? Like can I do an extra deal here? Can I maybe uh, figure out a way to uh, get generate a little bit of income from this initiative, right? That's where the bulk of my creativity and efforts are going to because again, that's where I see the biggest jumps in my overall financial, uh, my financial portfolio, if you will. And before I go to the next points about this, I thought I'd kind of, uh, I actually was just having a conversation uh, with a, another investor the other day, uh, someone newer, and I was explaining to them my food habits, right? Like, I, I mean, if I don't know if I mentioned this on video before, but I'm not really a big cook, I really don't like to cook, so I actually order in food every night, right? I mean, he- healthy stuff though, right? I've been uh, on a big health kick, but I order food every night and I spend a decent amount of money, right? I mean, it's usually 15, 20 bucks a meal um, when you include delivery fees, all that good stuff. And they were saying, wow, Leo, that's like such a big waste of money. Like, you know, I can I can cut down and I can save an extra like three, $400 a month, pop a bum, um, you're kind of blowing it. And even though that's true, right? Like. Yes, I'm spending three, four hundred dollars extra on food. Here's what they don't think about, right? Here's my rationale. Well, a number one, I spend less time on stuff I don't like, right? I don't like to cook. It's not like it makes me happy or anything. So I can cut down on half an hour a day right there um, in time, right? I just save thirty minutes right there. And again, time is absolutely money, right? I mean, I've got my per hour worth that I think I am. And believe me, the the time that I'm saving. Uh, by not having to cook and not having to deal with the dishes after and pup and all that good stuff is way more important than the money that I'm saving on potential from the bills I'm getting from Caviar or Grubhub or whatever it is, right? So you kind of have to put a lot of this in perspective and really figure out, okay, like, yes, I can save a little money here and yes, I can spend a lot of time saving money there, but is that my best use, right? Based on where I'm at today, based on where the path I'm trying to take, is that the best use for my efforts? So in terms of some of my other expenses, right? If I do incur expenses, a lot of them too are directly focused on growth, right? And that's why I also don't try to cut them all the time, right? Because I notice when the, sometimes the bigger the expenses, they actually do drive uh, growth in my income, which at the end of the day is the most important for me, right? Because again, you can always reduce costs, you can always figure out what to take here and there, but growing your income is much, much harder, right? So. For example, some of my bigger costs today for I have been doing personal coaching uh, with a coach for almost two years, right? I mean, I spend 1500 bucks a month on that. And I'll tell you guys this too, like I've told this to people and they'll be like, oh my God, that's so much money. Like, do you really get $1,500 worth of info every single time? And here's, on, if I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't say I get starstruck every single time, but there's just been a couple of key conversations I had with this co- with my coach that have completely shifted my business, right? I mean, the, those few gains that I've paid, paid for have, you know, I've seen returns of multiples on the money that I spent on the coaching. So you got to kind of, uh, you kind of got to attack your expenses and figure and incur those expenses with a different mindset as well, right? It's not only about, ooh, where can I cut, but like, what are the expenses that are really going to drive me, right? And again, it's not the food bill, it's not your Uber bill or your alcohol bill or whatever it is, right? But it's like those strategic expenses that are like, huh, 
where can I see potential growth, right? So outside of my coaching expenses, you guys also know that I'm a real estate agent and I approach my and I approach expenses there very similarly, right? I know a lot of agents that are like, oh, I don't wanna spend a little extra money here. I don't wanna spend a little extra money there, but I'm very aggressive about testing, right? I, I don't mind spending that extra money because for example, I know if I stroke a check here for a couple hundred bucks there, even if it gets me one client, I know I'm gonna make my money back 10X, right? So, you know, it's, it's imp again, it, I'm not saying you wanna, you know, become reckless and not understand where your money is going and just throw money away, but you gotta think about it, you gotta think about your expenses strategically. Where should I be growing them? Where should I be focusing on? And which expenses are the ones that are really gonna help me and potentially drive revenues for me at the end of the day? So I know I kind of threw a different mindset mentality at you guys, um, you know, through this video, but I did wanna make a couple of caveats. Number one, if you are younger, right, let's say you're just graduating out of college or you're just not starting with as much, you're obviously gonna be a lot more conscious about the expenses, right? You're not gonna be able to take as many big risks about, you know, even strategic expenses because, you know, those could kill you a lot quicker than someone with more money, right? That's kind of, it's just, it is what it is. So, you know, you obviously have to, you, you obviously have to take this in context and figure out exactly where you are at in terms of your own business, your own income, your own expenses, your own financial portfolio. So if you've got a little bit more to play with, you know, you can be a little bit more aggressive. If you're just starting out, then maybe you still kind of want to be a little bit more self-conscious, but again, still have that kind of little gear change, a uh, mindset gear change, right? Where you're not just only thinking about how to cut, 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 but like still kind of thinking like, okay, but what can I take on that might take me to the next level, right? And the second kind of caveat I'll put out there is at the end of the day, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. My goal is still to save quite a bit of money that I put into a savings account every single month, but don't forget to approach that money that you're saving as something that you're gonna be using, right? Something you're gonna be using to make a move in, right? So again, whether you're saving money to go invest in index funds or in your business or in real estate, whatever it is, you want to you want to you want to think about saving that money for a purpose and not just to save money just for the sake of saving money right because if you're going to if you're on this journey of financial freedom and you want to potentially you know try to retire in the next 5 10 15 years you're going to have to be a little aggressive right you can't just save money because cash in your account is meaningless right i mean there's it's not going to grow it's not going to compound um, so you have to still approach this whole thing with okay i'm still going to save money but it's for a purpose, right? It's for, it's to make these sorts of strategic moves in these sectors or in this business or in that business, right? So don't forget that because at the end of the day, that is the key, I think, to wealth building, right? Is you wanna be able to save a lot more money, but in order to deploy it, right? Like I don't want cash in my account, right? Every time I have big checks, I'm saving, saving, and then deploying it into real estate. So hopefully that helps, guys. Like I said, I know this is kind of a little bit of a different uh, twist on the typical saving income video you may see on YouTube. Um, you know, those are great videos and they're great concepts, but I do think if you make that little change, um, you know, it's helped me tremendously. I made probably the biggest impact, uh, you know, biggest strides on my financial portfolio the last two years since I've really changed this mindset. So hopefully this is helpful guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, just make sure to shoot them below.